The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 14, For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What shall I do? What is it then? I will pray with the spirit. And I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit. And I will sing with the understanding also. As born again believers. Who live by the word of the Lord. God's word is teaching us that there are two ways of singing. You sing with words that you understand. And you sing with words your mind does not understand, but by the Spirit. Two ways of praying. We pray with words we understand or in words we understand. And we pray with words that we don't understand, but comes by the Spirit. Just lift your hand one more time. And just freely bless the Lord as a child of God. Based on what I just read from 1 Corinthians 14. Just bless the Lord. You have to be free to do that. You have to just, once you're baptized with the Holy Spirit, bless the Lord in the Spirit. Bless the Lord with understanding. Pray with your spirit. Pray with understanding also. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Zibiri en tolo rosta kahaita in the brindo lo rosta kahaita le brindo. Ye kahan dale brindi kanta zaita be. Libi en tala brasu kita ham tale brindo lo rosta hatai. Your word says in First Corinthians fourteen, for he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men but unto God, for no man understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries to God. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity to speak mysteries to you by the Holy Spirit. For we know not what to pray for as we ought, but the Holy Spirit himself helps us. In this weakness of not knowing what to pray for as we ought to pray. And he prays through us with words which are too deep to be understood by the natural mind. The things of the spirit are deeper than the things of the natural. For your thoughts and your ways are higher than our thoughts and our ways. Thank you that when we pray by the spirit and in the spirit with our spirit, we speak mysteries unto God. I pray that these mysteries will accomplish my things in the earth that the natural cannot do. May we all move in the supernatural in the name of the Lord Jesus. The things that took us a long time to accomplish may take a very short time, may be accomplished in a shorter time. The things that we have tried to do in our own human strength may be taken over by the power of the Spirit and accomplished by the power of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Help us to operate in a dimension where it is not our might nor our power, but the Spirit at work. I pray this for everyone. I pray that Faith will be quickened, ignited, birth and quickened in the hearts of people. Birth in those who don't have it, quickened in those who already have it. That we will learn to stir ourselves up on our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Let this faith life be active in the church, in the body of Christ. That without fear, without timidity, shyness, 
we may enter into this realm of the supernatural into which you were born, to which we have been called to operate, that God may be magnified, that heaven may take over the earth, that your will in heaven may be done on the earth. This is our prayer. This is my prayer for people today in the name of Jesus. That those who don't understand these things, the Spirit will teach them. Those of us who understand that we'll have a greater understanding and that we will walk in it, not just know it in our heads, but act upon it. That, Lord, you may have your way. That the supernatural may take over the natural. That heaven may take over the earth in our lives. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. By the faith of God, I call it down, Lord. Thank you for answering. Thank you. That miracles will be birthed. Miracles will happen. They'll manifest. The supernatural will take over the natural. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Things people have waited for for years will be sped up by the Spirit into manifestation. Their healings, deliverance, breakthroughs, blessings, manifestation of purpose and destiny. Lord, I pray that it be so. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Give glory to God. Give glory to God, hallelujah, as we go into the message right away. Praise the Lord, God bless you, hallelujah. I like that uh, you turned the song, that last song, and personalized it, amen. Said that I am full of power. The spirit of the Lord is moving in me. I like that. Praise the Lord. Well, let me show you why I like it. Micah chapter 3. Micah chapter 3, verse 8. Bless the Lord. Let's study today. I really want you to personalize this today. So you're going to say, I am full of power and might. Full of power and might. That's what we are studying today. That's what we're looking at. Full of power and might. Micah 3, verse 8. But truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. But truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. And of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob his transgressions and to Israel his sins. Praise God. So very quickly, just to be fair to the scriptures, I want to make it present, current, modern to us today. I read this way, but truly I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord and of judgment and of might to declare unto the church and to declare to the world that which is contrary to God's word. A transgression is going against God's word. To transgress is to go against a known law. It's like if, if you, you're about to go into a property 
and you see a sign that says, do not trespass. Do not trespass. We all know it means what? Don't get onto that property, right? Don't pass onto that property. So to trespass is to pass against. To transgress is to go against. You're making movement against a known law. And this is some, he was raised up the prophet Micah in his time to make certain declarations to Israel about how they were going astray. Uh, for us, we are called to show the love of God to the world, the church, I mean. We are called to preach the gospel to everybody. And God will confirm his word with miracles, signs, and wonders following. For further study, the scriptures that support, directly support being called to the world, to preach to the world, they are Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Most of you know that, go into the whole world and preach the gospel to everybody. In fact, give it to us. We'll co I'll come back to Micah. Let's, let's just look at the, the, uh, the Great Commission, Matthew 28. Give us Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All power, the word power here means authority, authority. All power, all authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Roll down, 19. Go ye therefore, so go with my authority, right? You, you get the sense, go ye therefore, that therefore is based on what he had just said in 18. Everybody gets this? So, and in 18, he has all authority in heaven and on earth. Jesus is in heaven, we are on earth, and we have to take his authority to the earth, throughout the earth. What you, what you declare on earth, he will support you from heaven. Because what you declare on earth is already revealed to you in the Bible to be God's will. So, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The assumption and the truth, the reality is that you are, and the assumption is that you, you know the, the will in heaven. All right, before you pray is to be on earth. It is not what you will on earth that heaven enforces. It is what heaven wills, which you find out and pray for that heaven enforces. Make sense? Whatever you bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven. Actually, what it is, is whatever God has already bound in heaven, when you find that heaven says it's unlawful, and you pray that what is unlawful would stop, that heaven will support it. It's just like in the natural world, law enforcing agencies, their job is to enforce the law that is already written. They don't make it up. The policemen are supposed to, not supposed to make laws up when they're on the street. The laws are already written. You know, the regulations are there, and they are just enforcing it. That's what we're doing too. Amen. Amen. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Twenty teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. So we've been commanded to do something. That means we don't have an option. If you're commanded to do something, you don't have an option. You're a soldier, you're supposed to obey, right? 
teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So, we're to go and instruct the world. Praise the Lord. We are to teach people to observe what Jesus said. If you look at this, uh, as, as it's saying, as Jesus is talking to them, it really is saying, he's saying to the, to the apostles, what I'm telling you now, the rest of the people are not here. So I'm telling you to go and tell them. What I'm telling you is what I'm telling them, but they are not physically present. So you're going to take what I'm telling you and you're going to take it to them. Amen. What you practice is what they're supposed to be practicing. What you're doing is what I'm, I told you to do. So so that you'll be an example or a pattern to them of how I expect them to live, to behave, and what I expect them to do. You're following this? Right. Uh, so again, I don't get off and go too deep into it. Uh, the word teaching that's used here is actually saying, I want you to the, the full meaning in the Greek is I want you to enroll them as students in the school of Jesus Christ to be instructed. You have to enroll them in the school of instruction. Amen. So all the things Jesus taught them in the three years, some they understood right away, Others, they did not understand what he taught them until the Holy Spirit came and revealed things to them. They were like, oh, okay, now we understand why he said this. Okay, all those things, they were now supposed to enroll others in a school of learning. Praise God. So we are all in the school of learning. Amen. Amen. When you go to church, you're supposed to learn something. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Learn about Jesus Christ. You get this? Yes. Okay. Now, go back to 20. It says, teaching them to observe. Observe means practice, do, obey. Observe all things, not some things, but all. All things whatsoever I have commanded you. So his command to his apostles and disciples is his command to us today. Those of us who are followers and disciples of Jesus, right? And I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. So when you do what he says to do, he's with you to confirm his word. When you go into the whole world and you preach the gospel, he's going with you. Let's go back to Matthew 28, 18. We'll just read it with the explanation in mind that I've given you. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. The word power is a Greek word here. It's a Greek word exousia. It means authority. 19. Go ye therefore. So I'm delegating my authority to you. Go with my authority. I've been given authority in heaven and in earth. Now I'm leaving the earth, I'm going to go to heaven and be there. You're going to represent me on earth with my authority. So you have the authority of Jesus. You are Jesus in the earth. You've been in the church, the body of Christ. You have to look at yourself that way. You have to think of yourself that way. It's no longer you living. It is Christ living his life through you. That's how you have to see yourself. You have to be God inside minded. God is inside me. Greater is God in me than the enemy who is outside. 
once you are established in that truth, in that reality, nobody can convince you that there are generational curses and ancestral spirits that are more powerful than God in you. If you're still afraid of witches, and many Christians are, this is not only in Africa, it's all over the world. The Christians who are afraid of witches, they're afraid of voodoo, they're afraid of uh, black magic, they're afraid of all kinds of whatever they're called. Hexes, vexes, curses, whatever, and all these things that people are just met, they're messed up in their minds. The Christians who are messed up in their minds. Just because of fear of demons and witches and principalities and powers. But Jesus defeated all of them. And he said, I am with you always. The one who is with you and in you is greater than all that the false prophets are telling you that they are in your family and at your job. That is why you won't prosper. That is why this is going wrong. And that's all those things that they make so fantastic. When you put all of them together, they are under the devil. And the devil has been defeated. Praise God. Our problem is that we are not accepting the word of God. We're not doing things God's way. We're doing it our church way, our tradition way, our denomination way, not God's way. That's our problem. We want miracles. We want to see God move, but we're not doing things God's way. Some of us are shy. Some of us uh, timid. Some of us uh, feel that people will, will ridicule us. They'll make fun of us. Like even talking in tongues. Mm -hmm. Oh, they make fun of me when I do. They make fun of you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Go ye therefore and teach all nations. <laughs> teach all nations. Baptizing them. Another time I'll teach some more, but let me just move on. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Here, all three of them are represented. There are three gods. There's one God manifested in three persons. And that's to tell you that I want everybody to be, to operate in all three persons of the Godhead all the time, constantly. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit. You need to operate in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and operate in the love of God and operate in the power of the Holy Spirit. And some people, and will, some will argue, well, I, all I need is the love of God. Several years ago in London, our ministry in London, we had a preacher who came and taught, came to minister. Sometimes, you know, people tell you this big, big preacher, this their person has a name. You know, and I want you to come. And Christians in your fellowship will insist that you bring the person. And if you say no, they'll get mad. Some of them will even stop coming to church. It happens. They get mad at you. You didn't bring this big person. Who do you think you are? Seriously. Grow up. Anyway, so they pushed and we allowed the person to come. And the person came and uh, the person was against speaking in tongues. Can you imagine you come to, you see, some things you should never do. You have to be respectful, especially those of you who are learning to go into ministry and all that. If you ever get invited to somebody's church, don't ever say anything disparaging about that person. Don't even jokingly make a comment that is negative. It is disrespectful. It is not your place. Famela Bush still will play. You know, disrespectful. When you do that to me, that's the last time you preach in my church. I don't care who you are. Amen. This is the last time. Because you're disrespectful. Amen. It's not right. So learn. Anyway, so you've been invited to a tongues-talking, spirit-filled church. Especially when it's a bunch of Africans. <laughs> what I'm trying to suggest to you another way. When you go to a place where it's a whole lot of Africans who are spirit-filled, believe me you would know. Mm -hmm. yeah. They don't pray in tongues silently in their head. No. Then you come and you say, well, the first thing I want to tell you, teach you is a song. And the song was, uh, the spirit of the Lord, or no, the love of God in the heart of man 
is greater than speaking in tongues. Something like that. The love of God in the heart of man is greater than speaking in tongues. So that's what he taught the people. And speaking again, speaking in tongues. In a spirit-filled church. Don't do that. That was a long time ago. He's probably now baptizing the Holy Spirit himself. Yeah, amen. <laughs> we all learn that we grow. You know, God will get you. God's going to get you. So, to be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, it, it's not just the words, but the significance. Why he said that, the meaning, you know, the reason why he said baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit uh, is to immerse them. Baptism, you understand baptism? Baptism is immersion. Baptism is like burial. You know, you get buried. You get buried in water. You get buried in the soil, in the ground. Burial. You understand this? Yeah. Uh, Colossians 2, he says, buried with him by baptism. So baptism is burial. I think it's Colossians 2, maybe verse 12. So baptism is burial or immersion. All right, so what he's saying is that immerse them, Colossians 2. Ah, thank you. Look at that, Colossians 2, 12. You're really good. <laughs> Buried with him in baptism. So can I do one now? Yeah. Baptism is what? Buried with him. Buried with him. Now, when, when, like in the natural, when we bury somebody, do you see the person anymore? No. No. They become part of the earth, right? Part of the soil. Just like God said to Adam, did he say to Adam, yeah, and then he said to Adam, you know, from the dust you came to the dust you go? Yeah, the body. Right. Okay. So that means that for our body to be the body that God made it to be, we have to give it more things from the earth than all the artificial things we're eating. The body was made from the soil. So for the body could not have been made without the soil. So the body is the soil. Amen. To keep the body what it's supposed to be, you have to give it th things from the soil. Yeah. But a lot of us are eating things that's not from the soil. And yet we want our body to be our body. It won't be, it won't function that way. So, so let the power of the spirit through this teaching help you tell anything you're about to put in your mouth that is not earth-based. I'm not eating you. I stop my I, I, I stop writing. <laughs> Bury with him by Amen. Amen. Eat things that are earth-based for your body. Amen. And if it's not earth-based, it is plastic, it is too scientific, don't eat it. Buried with him by baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who, had, who has raised him from the dead. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Let's go back, please. I have so much to teach today. Back to Matthew, please. Yes, thank you. So, oh, no, no. Go, go to 19. Go ye therefore and teach. You see the word teach here? Yes. Teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And I'm telling you here that baptism means burial or immersion. So he's saying immerse them into the name or that is all that the father represents. Who the father is. Your name is who you are. Your name represents you. So the name here means who the father is. All that the father represents. The name of the son. All that the, father, the son is. Who the son, who the, his name represents. His name represents his glory, his majesty. All that he is, like Jesus said to Peter, or to all his disciples, who do men say I am? And they said, oh, you're Elijah, you're this, you're that. Then he said to them, who do you say I am? And nobody spoke up except Peter. Peter said, you are Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, God has revealed this to you, right? So Peter said two things, you are the son, you are Christ, the son of the living God. So son of God, and Christ. Christ is his title of, you know, the anointed one, the Messiah. 
son of God, the person, the child of the living God. He's saying two things. All right. So Jesus, the son of God, you have his title and you have who he is. Then you go to the Holy Ghost. Immerse them in the Holy Ghost. Who the Holy Spirit is. All that the Holy Spirit represents. So it's, just, it's more than the argument we've been having in the body of Christ about when we baptize people in water, some people argue. They say you have to baptize, baptize them in the name of Jesus only. And then some say, no, you have to baptize them in the name of the Father, Son. It's not the words that matter. It is you understanding what he's saying. When you do something in somebody's name, it means you are authorized to do it. That's what it's saying. So I'm authorized to baptize people in water. So I baptize you in water. Amen? But baptizing somebody in water, all that is saying is that the person has already believed in Jesus Christ. And baptism in water is just saying that I have already been buried with Christ and I've been raised with Christ in my spirit. Amen. Amen. But... What you say about the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Ghost, that is baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, what is this signifies or represents is bringing them, immersing them into all three, who they are, what they have and represent. This is important. Amen. Amen. All right, so if the Father is love, you immerse them in love. Amen. But he didn't say immerse, walk in love only. He said immerse them in the sun. The sun represents the grace of God. With, if Jesus had not come, we would not have had the full manifestation of God's grace. The law was given by Moses. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So you need, need the love of God and you need the grace of Jesus. Amen? Then at the same time, you need the power of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. So you cannot say as a Christian, well, as for me, all I care about is to have love. I don't like all the power things and all the tongues. And they make me nervous or they make, I don't understand them. It's kind of crazy. It's kind of spooky. Well, we don't say crazy because such nice people don't say it's crazy. But they just say it's not for me. I'm, I'm reserved. You know, I'm the calm type. You knew you were calm, and he still said you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Because you need supernatural power. As I prayed at the beginning, some things that you try to do in your own mind, in your own power, takes you so long. When the spirit begins to move, it happens just like that. Just like that. And really, I mean, I would rather have the spirit move so that I can get certain things done in my life than for me to spend like 30, 40, 50 years trying to get something done that the spirit can do just like that. Someone said, me too? I think I heard that. Bless you, can we? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Was it Ethan who said me too? You, okay. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. All right. So you're learning something. Are you getting the spirit of this message? Praise God. You want to be full of power and might by the spirit. So let's go to our text scripture, opening scripture, which was Micah 3 verse 8. Read that. Refresh our hearts and our minds. And then we'll move on. So Micah 3, verse 8. But truly, I am full of what? Power. Power. You don't stop there. We have, need to figure out what kind of power. Whose power? See, it's not human power. It's not natural power. I'm full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. Spirit of the Lord. Not spirit of Jezebel, not spirit of Ahab, not the spirit of whatever, but the spirit of the Lord. Very clear. Don't be afraid 
that you may get some weird or strange spirit if you ask God to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Satan lies, tells people that lie. What if I get some weird or strange things? So I, I don't want to wade into that river. There, there are some people who, because of maybe something that they saw happen to somebody that they can understand that was weird or strange, they're like, no, no, I don't want to. Because you never know, something might jump off of you. <laughs> well, when you have the Holy Spirit in you, nothing can jump off on you. Amen. Because they are afraid of the Holy Spirit yeah. in you. Yeah. 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 Amen. They're going to say, Jesus, I know, and you, I know. Yeah. Demon said that, Jesus, I know, and Paul, I know. Paul there represents believers. So don't let anybody lie to you and say, well, don't start casting out demons because, you know, in Acts 19, remember that demon that beat those seven people? They, that demon said, Jesus, I know, Paul, I know, but you, who are you? So they're going to tell you, who, who are you? Well, who are you Repres refers to those who are not born again. It refers to those who are vagabond, who are base fellows. Yeah. And you are not a base fellow. You are not vagabond. You are not working against Christ. You learn it. Yeah. Amen. See, people take scripture out of context and then they say, well, it's in the Bible. You know, they read it to you. Yeah, see, he, one, one guy beat seven men. Now, that's some power. That's some power. Who is that guy who just, you know, he's like 80 years old. He's still beating people up on TV. Chuck Norris, yeah. Oh. You Chuck Norris? Yeah, I'm, I'm kidding. He's not 80 years old. But Chuck Norris, yeah, yeah don't mess with him. He will terminate you. Yeah, but he's like probably like 70 or something, you know? And, and that guy, he, he'll tear you apart. Don't mess with Chuck. <laughs> mm. Well, so we're talking about the power of the Holy Spirit, not the power of any strange thing. Micah says, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. And of judgment. The word judgment here also means discerning, discernment. Spiritual understanding. Praise God. What does the Amplified say? Do we have the Amplified on there? Actually don't. Okay, I'm just, this is just Bible college stuff. Uh, the Amplified Bible is excellent in the New Testament. But it is not in the Old. Alright? Did you just hear that? The Amplified Bible itself is excellent in the New Testament. Because the scholars who wrote that were excellent Greek scholars. The New Testament was first written in Greek. So they knew what they were doing. They did a fantastic job. I think they should have left it alone with the Old Testament. Because they were not the best scholars to translate Hebrew to English. So there's some places in the Old Testament amplified that are not really kosher. I just had to say that. But in fact, I'm filled with power with the spirit of the Lord and with justice. Okay, so they use the word justice. Okay, and might. To declare to Jacob his transgressions and to Israel his sins. So another word is used, justice. All right, it's... Uh, give me Colossians 1 verse 9. Let me see. In the Amplified. Let's see. Colossians 1 9. Let me see what that says. For this reason, since the day we heard about it, we have not stopped praying for you, asking specifically that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will. Praying that you'll be filled, everybody please follow this in the Amplified, that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom. with insight into his purposes and in understanding of spiritual things. So I'd like you to do in your notes where we saw in Micah 3 and verse 8. Keep this for me for a moment. Remember in Micah 3, 8, we saw that he said, I'm full of power by the Spirit of the Lord and of judgment and of might. Yes? The word judgment there, I told you that it means like discernment. 
to have the ability to do spiritually, discern things, understand things. All right. For judgment in your notes, put judgment here is Colossians 1 9. Praise God. Amen. Okay, let me let me do this. I want to sit down. I want to sit down and do some teaching. Let me, let me do this. I need I need your help and sit down. Colossians 1 9. Is, are you going to be okay if, if I sit up here? I'll make it work. Yeah, you make it work? Mm -hmm. So I can sit down here? Yep. You make it work? Okay. Yeah, let's do that. Thank you. Praise God. I need, yes, sir. Thank you. I appreciate your help. And then I'm going to need that, please, right here. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. So this is what I want you to do. Do a little Bible study right there. Praise God. So this is what you want to do. Micah 3. Right? Don't lose your place. Don't, don't let everything you know, kind of throw you off. All right. So bear with me. Micah 3, verse 8. But truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord and of judgment. I'm good? Okay, thank you. Everybody okay? Yeah. All right. The word judgment here, all right, okay, in your notes and for your understanding, the word judgment here has moral in it, all right? And what it means is to be able to spiritually judge from what is right and wrong. All right? Spiritually, to be able to detect, like you're yeah, like a detective, all right? Anybody here ever watched, uh, I don't know, CISC, CSI? You know, like uh, these guys, you know, will come on the scene, crime scene, and try to figure out what happened, yeah. what really happened. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, we are living in this world, and you need to know what's really going on. You need to know. You need to know what to do. Praise the Lord. Even in business, those who usually tend to get ahead are people who kind of catch on to what the world's going to need, what's coming ahead. Where is technology taking us? Amen. Lord, help us. Help us. Some things are not very uh, popular, and people tend to fight it. I know I personally just kind of have a hard time, and people don't like me for this. I know a lot of people try to change me, and uh, I don't like it. I'm a nice person, you know, and I don't go out to try to make anybody uncomfortable or try to make anybody feel that they are wrong and I'm right. But there's some things that just need to change, and we need to challenge it. And uh, you know, sometimes again, I have a use of wisdom. Uh, bear with me. You, you know, for certain things to change in this world, sometimes you become a sacrificial person Amen. to effect change. Amen. And when you're doing it, at the time you're doing it, it's not popular. But I personally, I'm willing to live that way. Amen. I, I'd rather just live by what I'm convicted by than just go through the motions. I want to live that way. I, I want to live by my convictions. Amen. Yes. Amen. Let me tell you something. Christians, we are praying that God will bless us financially. All right? But a lot of Christians are not taught about how the world of finance work, how it works. We don't understand economics. We don't understand finance. When God gives us the wealth of the sinner, when it's transferred to the church, a lot of the people in the church will lose it. The world will get it back because they understand the language. 
they understand it more than people in the church. And I will say this. I know a lot of people won't like it, but I'll say it. Because I know it's out there in the world. And, and something has, somebody has to start something. This is my conviction. That in the Christian world, and I've seen it a lot in America, there are a group of Christians who kind of teach that we, we Christians have to raise our children in what we call Christian schools. Christian private schools, elementary, middle, uh, high school, even Christian universities. I am not opposed to that. I agree. I'm for it. Amen. You are with me so far? Mm -hmm. I'm for it. But in addition, we should not teach like that is the only way that our children can prosper in this world. We were not meant to be raised like in a monastery to live in this world. We can be in the world and not be of the world. We can be in the world and be the shining lights to the world. Be the city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. We will be sought out and sought after. Praise the Lord. And I'm teaching you that it is possible for the Lord God by his spirit to make us full of the spirit and full of power and full of judgment, justice, discernment, discernment, spiritual understanding. Amen. To be sharp in the spirit. To see what is yet to come. Jesus said the spirit will show you things that are yet to come. Amen. Amen. That can happen in business. That can happen in technology. That can happen in politics. That can happen in every aspect of life. Amen. And sometimes we need to let our children go to the best schools. And if the best school is not a Christian school, you can still believe God to take your children there. So this kind of teaching where, forgive me for saying it, but everybody has to go to, I won't mention any name, but you know where I'm going with this. But everybody has to go to this place, and sometimes in that place they even teach that white people should not marry black people. It has happened in these United States. There are some so-called Christian places of higher, higher learning, tertiary level education, where the Christians believe that white people should not marry black people. I will not send, this is personally me, I will not send my child to such a place. Amen. 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 Because the spirit there is not the spirit of the love of God. Amen. Amen. It is racist. It is racist and it is wrong. Amen. And sometimes, I add this to it, sometimes the academic level is lower compared to the, what the world has. That we raise them there in those institutions, they come out and they cannot compete with the world when it comes to economics, when it comes to finance, when it comes to leadership in the world. They can't compete. They cannot compete. And so it's time. I'm challenging you all, missions, ministries, people. I'm not giving to pastor the whole world. I'm supposed to teach the world, but not pastor the whole world. But I'm called to pastor you if you believe that God called you here. And I'm telling you this. There's more that God wants to do in this world through us. But we're limiting him with our limited minds, with our, with our limited vision. We're thinking that God can only work if we raise our children in so-called Christian schools, in so-called Christian universities. And some of those places, they don't even love people. They only love themselves. They are kind, whatever they believe that kind is. And I am opposed to that. And I want to be free to be me and to teach me. Praise God. So don't counsel me about this after church. Just leave me alone. Because it is irritating. It's like, you want to put me in a box. You want to, you know, just, just leave me be. Right. You didn't call me. God called me. Amen. And I have to be me. That's right. That's right. I have to be me. Woo. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now, if you don't agree, that's fine. But this is my conviction. This is my platform. 
Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. All right. So judgment here. He says, I am full of judgment. It's not to judge other people, but to have understanding to judge between right and wrong. Amen. Between what's the best, what is good, what is acceptable, and what is perfect. My sister, you understand this? Let me show you. Let me show you this, these three levels. Go to Romans 12. Romans 12. Romans 12. Give us verse 2. Let me see what that says, please. Are you learning something? Yes. Yeah. All right. Now, you don't have to accept what I'm saying. Just believe what you believe. Stay with what you believe. If I can teach from the Word of God and it's God's Word, then I encourage you to open your heart and come along with God's word. It might be tough, it might be hard, but come along with God's word. Amen. Amen. Romans 12. I said verse 2, right? Yes. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. Okay? That you may prove what is that. Good. Look at the three levels. Three, three. Good, good. good. And, acceptable. and acceptable. And perfect. And perfect. Will of God. But the man when you see this? Good. Acceptable. Perfect. Ms. Oscar? You with me on that? Yeah. Praise God. Everybody sees this. Yes. Good. Acceptable. Acceptable. And perfect. and perfect. It is possible for you to know, to be able to prove. What's, what's the word for proof there in the Amplified? Give us Amplified, please. And do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs. But be ye transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes, so that you may prove for yourselves what the will of God is. That which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. Amen. Okay. So that also says proof. I want to see if there's another word for proof in another, a different version. What does NIV say? Approve. Approve? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, according to this verse, it's not the only verse that deals with change or transformation, but according to this verse, what changes us? What transforms us? What? Not how, but what? What is the thing? What is the element that changes us? Not how. I will do the how in a moment. Be not, and be not, I rather focus, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. All right. We are changed, how? By the renewing of our what? Mind. So let's say that I declare, let's say I declare 30 days of fasting and prayer, or 40 days of fasting and prayer. Let's say I declare that. For change and we do the 40 days for fasting and prayer we fast and we pray and we don't get into God's word to change our minds what are we doing we may be fasting and praying to change certain things right but at the end of the fasting and prayer to change things, who has not yet been changed? 
we have not been changed. Okay? All right. Pastor Mike, let me say this for when you go to minister in Ghana, because we were born there. I'm from heaven, you know that, right? Amen. <laughs> but we were born there. We've had discussions. I'm sure you've had some of these discussions with other ministers. It's not only about Ghana and places in Africa, but even here also. Please pay attention to this. If, you, you know, you can fast and pray. Fasting is good. Prayer is good. We must fast and pray. Amen. And that will change things. But it doesn't change you. Yeah. Fasting and prayer changes things. We stop spiritual operations of darkness. But people don't change. Pastor Mike, that is why sometimes people get frustrated with some of the Christians in Ghana. You're like, with all the church going, with all the conferences, with all the fastings that we're declaring, and the people can fast in Ghana, and fast and pray, and it's good. But if we're doing that in isolation to this, changing through changing our minds with the word of God, then you are still the same. So we have a lot of frustration in churches, pastors trying to grow churches and help the people and pastors are getting frustrated because there's, the people are not changed, their character is not changed. There's some churches where it's unfortunate, people steal church money. I mean, if you're going to steal from anybody, don't ever steal. But if you're going to steal from anybody, don't steal from God. Yeah. I mean, don't ever steal. But you know, to steal from God. But it happens. And you scratch and you're like, what? What? And some of these places, people are more spiritual, it appears, than other places. And you, you can't understand. You're like, what's going on? It's just simply because they don't want to change their thinking. They don't want to change their mind. Just like I started talking about praying in tongues. There are some Christians, they don't care what I say about praying in tongues. They have made up their mind. I don't like that thing. I don't want it. I don't want you to pray in tongues when I'm present. I don't care. Even if God comes here, I don't care. Yeah. You think it doesn't happen? It happens. It happens. When you put yourself in that state, God can't help you. You cannot be helped. And you end up Kicking against the bricks. Mr. Sherman, you got that. I could see that your spirit resonated with that. And so people are hurting themselves. You go into circles and they're like, why is, why is, there's no, why, there's no, I fasted, I prayed. When the pastor declared 30 days, I came to church, we fasted and prayed. And we do these things. Sometimes we have 30 days of fasting and prayer three times a year. And the people don't change. Because the word that's supposed to change their thinking, they are not applying the word of God to change their thinking. We are transformed by the renewing of our mind. You are not transformed by fasting and prayer. Fasting and prayer stops the demon in your father's hometown. That's what, isn't that what Jesus said in Mark 9? Remember Mike? He said in Mark 9, 29, some of these will not come out except by fasting and prayer. Amen. So yes, in Mark 9, 29, Mark 9, 29, we deal with these demons by fasting and prayer. But sometimes the human being you're dealing with is worse than a demon. They are a walking demon themselves. And what are you going to do about that? The 
problem of Africa, for example, would never change until politicians, the leaders, address issues as they are. America too. But we dance around the issues and nobody wants to address things as they should. There is, there is never a transformation in human life unless there's a change of mind. And it makes life hard. Needless hard. Why do we have divorce? Why? Hardness of heart. For hardness of heart. I refuse to change. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you do. Sometimes that's the position. Church breaks. Countries are divided because everybody takes their position and regardless of what you do. I am for Judge Brett Kavanaugh. I'm against Judge, Judge Brett Kavanaugh. The lines are drawn. And nobody cares about the real issue. We will come back and we'll have to pass this test again. Maybe not, not this year, maybe not next year, maybe not 10 years from now, but America will be back at this place again. <laughs> Between Ghana and Ivory Coast, those two countries control, no, not control, they are responsible for giving the world the most cocoa and for all cocoa related products. Any kind of chocolate thing you have. Uh, what's that thing we do in February? Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Chocolate. chocolate Day. All the money that is made and it doesn't go to Africa. Because we are not at the table where the decision is made as to the prices. What price on the international market prices the cocoa will be pegged at. You produce it. I mean, you, it's your natural resource. You give it to the world, but you don't have any ability to speak concerning it. How are you ever going to get out of that hole? So they say, go and get $50 billion loan from China. Now we've moved from the West. Now we go to China. <laughs> Very soon, <laughs> we get colonized all over again. That is not the solution. There has to be a change of mind. I know that's like a high level, that international, you know, but it comes, it affects human lives. Poverty, yeah. education, yeah. how much money is coming to the country? Yeah. People are poor, yeah. you know, and then sometimes somebody is just minding their own business. And because somebody is so poor and has nothing to eat, they commit a crime right. and hurt yeah. a tourist or, you know, which they would not have done if they weren't hungry. Exactly. And they're hungry because the powers that be know that <laughs> this area needs, the education system needs to be improved. They know that the water that is going in there is affecting the brain of the children. The water is messed up and they will change. It didn't happen in, where did it happen in America? Where? Detroit? Michigan, right? Was it Michigan? Yeah. yeah. So, born again believers, let me tell you this, fasting and prayer moves things in the realm of the spirit. But we have to also find a way to operate in the natural world to tell the leaders there has to be a change of mind towards the people in Michigan about the water or the people in Appalachia about this or the or whatever. You, you have, we have to raise the youth, the young people in our colleges, 
in the Christian colleges and teach them that. We are raising you up to come to deliberately challenge these mindsets and change them until these policies are changed. We're going nowhere. We're going nowhere. I know that's international level, that's a bigger thing. You can bring it to your family. You can bring it to your church. Some pastors really work hard. They pray. They work hard. But until your administrative structures are set right, infrastructure, take a country where the, the structure, you see, the structure is not right. Fast and pray. Do all your spiritual gymnastics and you're still limited. Take me. All I can do is pray, prepare, come and teach, right? But if whoever handles this, the sound, and all that goes with it, and recording it, the, the group don't set it right. If whoever seats people, they don't set it right. In the middle of your teaching, somebody's going across the video. And for me personally, that can throw me off. Yeah. So, Structures are important for growth. Yes. It, it's not only that you fasted and prayed. Mm. Yes. Jesus. Yes. Help us. Yes. So he said, I am full of power and might. See that number of things he talked about. I have I'm full of power. I'm full of might. I'm full of discernment. Discerning the ability to discern what is good, what is wrong, and even after what's good, what is perfect. Because some decisions, young people, that you make, they are not the perfect will of God for your life. And you have to pray, you have to seek God, you have to stay in that place, waiting on Him, go thinking over the word, you know, and let the Spirit of God bring from within your spirit because you are immersed in the Father, in the Son, and in the Spirit. Let the Spirit bring, help you fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Share with the Holy Spirit in His gift of wisdom, in His gift of knowledge, in His gift of discernment and discernment of spirits. Let Him bring it out of your spirit what is right. For the Word of God is living and active and powerful and sharper than any weapon against you, any two-edged sword. It pierces to the separation, the dividing asunder of spirit and soul, bone and marrow, so that you know what is of the soul and what is of the spirit. Some things, they are only of your soul, that is of your mind, your emotions and your will. And sometimes that emotional decision will not help you. It has to be a spiritual decision. And your daughter, your 22-year-old, has to understand that, to make that decision by the spirit and not by emotions. Oh, but daddy, I love him. He makes my stars and my donkeys fly. Hey, your donkeys are flying. Hmm. Oh, Jesus. You have to understand the decision that is made by the Spirit and the decision that is made from your soul. And Hebrews 4 tells us that the Word of God can discern, verse 12, between the Spirit and the soul, and the bone and the marrow. Some of our decisions, they are just purely out of the flesh. Another decision, they are in the soul realm. And others are made from the Spirit. Did you get it? Amen. God is good. So what is, what is the judgment here today? We find in Colossians 1 and verse 12. Thank you, Lord. You got it? Let me read from King James Version. I know you can put whatever up there. That's fine. I want to read from King James Version. Colossians 1, 9. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you 
and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. You can be full of wisdom and spiritual understanding by the Spirit. By the Spirit. The Holy Spirit, I mean. Amen. Amen. And a lot of the time, that spiritual understanding comes in seasons of prayer. When you're praying, especially when you're praying in the Spirit, praying in the Spirit, praying in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit will bring out His wisdom to you, to your spirit, and your spirit will tell your mind, Amen. And you go and intelligently act on it. Then you be blessed. You learn something? That you can go home and apply. Praise God. So let's say it's a job area, your career, or it's a relationship area. Somebody wants to date you, whatever. Take that subject to the Lord in prayer. Google that topic, that subject. Google it. Or use your concordance. You're going to find verses related to that topic. Marriage, courtship, uh, promotion, job, work. Google that. Find verses. And as you read the verses, some of the verses will resonate with your spirit. They just click. It's like as I was teaching, before I forgot the word, but before I said something, Mrs. Sherman said it. So her spirit was running with it. And then earlier, I was saying something, I think it was Kimberly and Ethan's mom. And forgive me for calling you Ethan's mom, but Ethan is more important for me right now. So Ethan's mom. Lisa, yes. Uh, you know, they just, and I think somebody was Beverly. You know, they, they just said it. So your, your spirit is going, you know, with it. Right. I'm sure what, what's happening with some of you just maybe didn't let it out or say it out. You know, so that the, the things of God are known by the spirit of God. You with me? The things of man are known by the spirit of a man. Now, the things of God are known by the spirit of God. And the Spirit of God reveals those things to the Spirit of man. When it reveals to your spirit, your spirit tells your mind. And sometimes you just blurt it out, say it. All right. So as the word is being taught, spirit to spirit, your spirit connects with it. The Holy Spirit testifies to our spirit or witnesses to our spirit that we are the children of God. Amen. You just sense it, you know it. So as I'm teaching, you sense certain things. You know certain things. Are you with me? Yes. You go with it. All right. As your spirit is receiving it from God, your spirit then tells your mind. So you have God's mind about that issue. This is how you should pray over your career, over the dating, the courtship, the marriage. The, just put whatever subject, the business. You understand? Yeah. So you look at word business in the Bible and you find verses. As you're reading the verses, some of them will just hit your spirit. Okay, that's what you do. The ones that hit your spirit, this is what you're going to do. You have, those of you who are technology people, just have your computer. Those of us who still write, we also have our pad and our pen. As you're going through the verses, the one that hits you, Write the verse down. Write the verse down. Don't stop there. Write that verse down. Go to the next one. If that does not click, don't worry. Go to the next one. If that clicks with your spirit, write that down. Don't stop. Write them down. Don't say in your mind, I'll remember it. Believe me. You won't remember all of them that you need. Write them down. Don't stop there. Keep writing as many as resonate with your spirit. That means God is saying for you, maybe not for me, not for your friend, but for you, this is what you need now. So you write those verses down. You may get two, you may get three, you may get four, it doesn't matter. Then you take time to go through each one of them. 
You, you get me now? They connected with your spirit. Your spirit connected with them. You got it. From God. Amen. About whatever issue there is. Amen. Then, what has now been quickened to your spirit, which has come to your mind, use it to replace what you were thinking prior to what God just gave you. Amen. Now that what God wants for you is in your heart and in your mind, two places, not your heart only. Working with God is not only, oh Lord, I love you, I feel it, Jesus, oh, see, that means only that. No, write it on your mind. Your mind has to know that scripture. Amen. You have to cognitively, intelligently, deliberately, thinking, cold, hard facts in your mind. Not, ooh, 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 Jesus. I don't have to know. I just know God's got me. Oh, Jesus, God's got me. Hey. No. You have to be standing on a word. And you have to know what word you are standing on. And you have to know the word you're standing on in your mind. Pastor, what about my spirit? We already have done that. It's already in your spirit. That was the place. How was church? Oh, that was fantastic. It was so good. Man, the Lord was there. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I thought you should have been there. What did Pastor talk about? Well, I don't know, but it was so good. <laughs> Oh my God, seriously. <laughs> no change. Ten years later, that area, still no change. Hmm. May God help us. God help us. Let me show you something. How not to frustrate yourself. Romans 8 verses 6 and 7. Let's do verse 6 first. We'll do verse 7. Romans 8, 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Verse 7. Because the carnal mind is what? This is Romans 8, verse 7. In my King James Version, what's the word after it's? Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. <laughs> For it is, it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So we, we think that the devil is the only enemy of God. No, sometimes you make yourself an enemy of God. God wants to save, God wants to heal, God wants to bless you, God wants to move your life forward, but you refuse to change your mind. To come along with God in his program for your life. <laughs> Let me show you something about prejudice in the Bible. Let me show you something. Come to Acts chapter 10. Tell you, man, we can hinder God so much. Uh, hmm. Is it Acts 10? Let me see. Acts 10, 34. Acts 10, 34. When, if you find the same, amen. amen. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. <laughs> Verse 35. But in every nation, he that fears him 
and works righteousness is accepted with him. So before this day, Peter used to think that it was only in his nation, his country only, that God loved the people and looked favorably towards them. Peter used to think, hey, 10 years after Jesus had gone to heaven, 10 years, the apostle Peter was prejudiced. They hindered God from saving lives. Scary. He says, of the truth I perceive that God is no respect of persons. So prior to this, he used to think God was what? Partial to him and his country folks only. Wow. Let me show you one more thing. Acts 11, 19. This Bible will teach you things about people and about God. God's way and man's way. God's way is higher. God's way is better. You can continue to frustrate yourself by holding on to what you believe. And that gets you nowhere. What is sad is that when it hinders other people, because it's your life. If you choose to do your life your way, well, it's only you. But where your life affects others, say there's bitterness. I taught you that the other day. Hebrews 12, the root of bitterness springing up will trouble you and defile others. No, will defile you and trouble others. If we could limit it, isolate it to just you, it'd be fine. I would have no problem if all the political leaders in Africa will just affect themselves only and leave the countries alone. I have no problem. But the thing is that it's affecting my life. It's affecting my peace. It's affecting my joy. And I refuse to be silent about it. So if my power is through prayer, then I use my power in prayer. And through voting, then I use it. And through making my voice heard, yes. then I use it. Yes. Yes. You cannot live a selfish life. You have to live to make a change. Bring the kingdom of God into this earth. Yes. He said, go into the whole world and preach the good news. Good news to a poor person is that you don't have to be poor anymore. Amen. And whatever structures we can put in place to change that, let's put it, yes. those structures in place. Yes. No country will grow if there is no infrastructure. If the institutions in the country don't work, we can't get anywhere. So let's address that. <laughs> Pastor Mike, all the presidents come and go in Ghana. The people in the ministries, the departments, what do they call ministries here in America? Departments, Department of Education, Department of Defense Department. Those people, they are always there. Those structures, they're always there. If you don't put them right, forget, forget you. They will frustrate you. It's the same thing with your families. Young mothers and fathers, raising young children, you need structures for your children. You need certain immovable structures. They don't change. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Amen. Some things you have to be flexible to change, but scratches. Yeah. Just like Pastor Meg saying, the children go to church every Sunday. We have all night. This is what your father does. You go. You bundle everybody. When they are five years old, they bring their pillows and their whatever comforters. And they are sleeping upstairs and we're praying. Till today, they remember it. Let them sit under the anointing. Let them be impacted. When they grow up, they will not depart from it. Amen. Look at this, Acts 11. Acts 11, 19. Acts 11, 19. 
Now they which had scattered abroad after the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phoenix and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word. What I want is the last part. Everybody, let's read. Preaching the word to none, to none but to the Jews only. But Jews only. What did, what did Jesus tell them that we, we read from Matthew 28? Go to the whole world, preach the gospel to everybody. Yeah. Look at them. Look at them here. They preach to everybody who was French. <laughs> Only the Francophones. <laughs> I'm messing with you now. They preach to only Francophones. Or only Anglophones. Whites only. White people only. Make America white again. I rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Make America what God ordained her to be in Jesus' name. Make America black only. No. Asian only. No. Latino only. No. Do you see this? They preach to none but Jews. For 10 years, what God wanted to do was limited by his people. What does God want to do in your life that you may be limited? What does God, what does God want to do in your social relationship that you may be limited? I want to marry a dark, tall, <laughs> six-footer. Six-six. Unless he's six-six, I'm not even considering I don't want my children to be short. <laughs> Pastor, but don't I have a preference? Yes, you do have a preference. So wait. They'll come. After, I won't even confess it. No. Just make sure that your judgments come from the Spirit of God. Yes, amen. Maybe you made those decisions and establish those structures before you were saved, before you knew God. But when you come to God, you find out that, you know, that she has to be blonde is not the only thing. Or she has to be brunette is not the only thing. <laughs> I pray that I've helped you. Amen. Read the scripture and then we'll pray. Acts 1 8. Acts 1 8 is the sister scripture to Mark, Micah 3 8. What did I say? Acts 1 8 is the sister scripture to Micah 3 8. Micah 3 8 says, I'm full of power and might by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen to do this, to do that, to do these things. Acts 1, 8. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Amen. And you will do. You'll be witnesses to me, who is speaking Jesus. Witnesses not to your church, not to Pastor Turkson, not to your tradition, <laughs> but to Jesus. Amen. Nothing like I was born Baptist, I'll die Baptist. You were not born Baptist. <laughs> I was raised Catholic and I'll die Catholic. I was raised Pentecostal and I'll die Pentecostal. And all those things we say. No, you are not to be a witness to Pentecostal, Pentecostal. <laughs> You are not raised to be a witness of what is Pentecostal, Pentecostalism, or anything, but a witness to Jesus. Amen. In all the earth. In all the earth to touch everybody. Not Jews only. Not blacks only. Not Africans only. Not whites only. To touch everybody. Amen. And you are full of power. That's what he said. Amen. Amen. And you are to 
teaching next week, but when you read on, you find out that the power came down, the Holy Spirit came down in Acts, in Acts chapter 2, the next chapter after Acts 1, when he said you receive power, they received the power. Amen. To be witnesses unto Jesus. Praise God. So let's present Jesus and not what I think. This is what I think. Train yourself to present this is what the Word of God says. This is what the Bible says. Amen. Live as much as possible. Live your life this way. This is the Word. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to pray two prayers now. The first one is for you to say, Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior, if you've never done that. Because he said they will go and be witnesses to Jesus. Well, the main thing about witnessing concerning Jesus is this. He died for your sins, and he was raised up for you to be made righteous. So I'm offering this to you. You can say, Jesus, now I know for me you died. For me you were raised up. I'm not following religion. I want to know you. So I ask you to come into my life. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. You can pray that. That's the first prayer. Many of us have already done this. We did it at some point in our lives. Hallelujah. If you've already done that, and I'd like you to pray this prayer. Say, Lord, today I rededicate myself to witnessing concerning Jesus. To no longer witness concerning what I think. In any area of my life, I make this choice today. And this prayer I would like to ask for all of us to pray myself included. Every one of us has some area where the Lord is working on us. So just, just bring yourself before the Lord and say, Lord, I receive your power so that I will be a living witness of Jesus in that area where I have been a witness of myself or my, I don't know, tradition my race, my family tradition, my color, my gender, whatever. I present that to you. I present that to you. So that I may live not by my mind, my might, but by your power. Hallelujah. That heaven's ways and heaven's thoughts that are higher than the earth may operate in my life. This is, this is the second prayer I want all of us to pray. So just go ahead and take a moment and pray before you leave today and settle everything with God. Today I prayed about this. Today I committed something that Spirit spoke to me about, I committed it to the Lord today. You can write it down. The answer will come from God. The transformation will come. Praise the Lord by the Spirit. Maybe in the area of your finances, may God break poverty, indebtedness, break it out of your life. Some don't have a spirit of poverty or indebtedness, but they mismanage. Mismanagement, really, uh, is what has been stealing. Satan is using to steal their money. If that's your case, ah, the Lord helps you today. Hallelujah. If someone else is because you really don't have a knowledge or understanding of the realm of finance. Well, today, the Lord opens your heart and he opens your understanding and he frees you. Amen. And you're going to come in to study it. God will help you. Praise God. It's like some people have a blockage in their mind. They're like, I don't get science. I don't get math. I don't get this. I don't get it at all. Well, whatever is that hindrance, may the Spirit of the Lord break that bondage. 
and pulled out that stronghold for you. You can understand what you need to understand to break through. You can get it. You can get it. You are full of, of the Spirit of God. You're full of wisdom. You're full of spiritual understanding. Judgment, justice, discernment, discernment. You have it. Believe it, receive it. Makataya. Bebri in the Bahato I want to encourage you to please pray. Pray. Take this seriously and pray. Before you go, just pray about it. Whatever it is, pray and get your breakthrough. And I pray for you in Jesus' name. And I pray for all who join with us today in the name of Jesus. That breakthroughs will come for you. That mental stronghold will be changed by the word of the Lord, replaced by the word of the Lord. That spiritual stronghold will bow. Receive your liberty, receive your breakthrough. I pray for God's people today. Father, touch people in here, people receiving through social media. I pray for all their lives, their homes, their families, their relationships, their financial lives, their marital lives, family life, whatever it may be, oh God, that they need your breakthrough in. In the name of Jesus, may the spirit of power, the spirit of the Lord, break asunder gates of brass, bars of iron. Bring breakthroughs and liberty. Receive it now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now that you've prayed in English or French or in understanding, just take a couple of minutes, pray in the Spirit. Just pray in the Spirit. Lift your voice and pray in the Holy Spirit. Pray with your Spirit and let the Holy Spirit move upon you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Everybody, just pray. You can sit and pray. You can stand and pray. You can walk. You can pace the floor and pray, but just pray in Jesus' name. And if you're already born again, but you don't have the spirit of power, I pray for you now. Receive the power of God in Jesus' name. And also may your tongues be loosed to pray in tongues in the name of Jesus. By faith, it's done. Receive the power in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And begin to pray in the spirit. Everybody, pray in the spirit. Praise God. The pastors will help me and we will pray. Let the Spirit of the Lord move in the name of Jesus. Pastors and ministers will help me. We will take microphones and we will pray. We want God's Spirit to just move. God's Spirit to move in the name of Jesus. I've already prayed for you all. Receive it. God bless you.